What do creative people living in the Florida Keys, like us, who have full-time jobs in order to pay bills, what do you do in your free time to exercise and use your creative brain and feed your creative soul? That's the question, and this podcast will provide answers. My name is Nancy Truesdale. Welcome to Creatives in the Keys. This is Nancy Truesdale, and today is an exciting day for me because I get to talk and interview one of my Keys heroes, Beth Kamenstein, who is a local ceramicist, wonderful mother, parent, and community activist, and I'm excited to talk to her about her passion of ceramics. Um, welcome, Beth. Hey, Nancy. Thanks. Thanks for thinking of me. Well, this is well, this has been um, high on my list to get to come talk to you. Cool. So, well, welcome. Well, let's start from the beginning. How yeah. did you become a ceramicist? Well, it's my mom. My mom, when I was 16, for some reason or another, really felt like I needed to be involved in still other things. <laughs> she hooked me up with a potter, and this is northern New Jersey, in Teaneck, who I really just enjoyed. Her company, so I went once a week. It sort of seemed like a natural kind of thing to add to my life. Did you study formally in college? I did. I studied formally in college, and I had a wonderful teacher. Well, I had two, but one who I, like, really connected to. His name is Stanley Rosen. He's uh, still working, an elder now, 93 or 94, something That's like that. I know. He's wonderful. Really wonderful. And recently I had an opportunity of putting a show together of his work with a good friend of mine. That's fabulous. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So did you major in ceramics? So I went to Bennington College, and um, it was one of the few colleges that one could major in all kinds of things. So I did ceramics and drawing and dance. Unbelievable. Right. And um, actually, I was able to work all through high school, too. So it was uh, easy. After college, where did um, your ceramics take you? I met, actually, when I was in high school. Actually, I dropped out of high school, and I started a high school. It was called the Free School of Bergen County. And when our second year of high school, and I was a senior by then, we hired some teachers. And one of them was Ron. And so... I, For those who don't know, she's speaking of the late great... Ron Levy. So I met Ron Levy. I actually hired him as my high school teacher. <laughs> well, not just mine, but our, one of our high school teachers. So when he was studying ceramics. So we, I learned a lot from him actually um, all through high school. And then I went to Bennington. And then, but we stayed very much in, involved with each other's life. So after college, I went and lived with him in New York City. He was then the studio manager of a wonderful ceramic place called the Greenwich House Ceramic. And it's also a settlement house, really interesting history of Greenwich House on its own as the sort of even a heart of ceramics. But so he was the manager there and that got him a lot of voice and fame in New York City. And so he had some shows, and he was, like, happening, and I was in college. So it was really exciting to actually move in with him. But then I didn't really just want that as my life to just sort of be that. So I, I um, moved to uh, Italy, to Florence, for, like, um, half a year or something like that, and, and uh, worked with a potter there. And I uh, got to walk around the streets of Florence, and I'm very connected to early Renaissance art and those frescoes, and I just, I, the Renaissance is always something close to me. So, there. From, did that get you anywhere? It did, did it that, did. It, did it, got us, it got us to New York and to Florence, and, Florence. and then right. how, get me to the Keys. Then, how did you wind up in the Keys? So after Florence, well, I felt like if I didn't come home from Florence when I did, I would lose Ron. At that point, I, don't, I really wasn't ready to lose that relationship. So I came home, and he had found a building in New York City on Mulberry Street, that was an old manufacturing of clay. It was like, I think it's called Firehouse Ceramics, something like that. Wow. Anyway, so a single-story building, and he thought that it would be great to rent. 
And so I, I joined him on the rental of that place. At the same time, my father's father, my grandfather, had just passed away. And my father inherited um, part of a family hardware store. It was a big hardware store in New York City, like two dozen employees, a union, all that sort of stuff. And my father didn't want to work in it. So um, and I had studios, studios. I had several studios. I was working part-time and catering and whatever. And my father said, well, come and work in the store. And I said, I work part-time so that I could keep up my studio life. And so I did. I worked part-time in the store, and this is the 70s, and the store was a very dynamic place. It was 9th Street and 3rd Avenue in New York City, the heart of really a lot of painters, uh, art, lots going on there. And I met lots of people, and I learned about hardware, and I learned about business, and every time I needed a raise, I got another <laughs> hour of work. So the next thing I know, you know, five or six, seven years later, whatever it is, I'm working full time all the time. And I'm running the store with my brother. Yeah, but Ron and I lived in that studio. Well, it was a one-story building. It was really expensive then. Um, and we thought, God, well, if we could just, you know, buy it and then... um build some stories above and we had like five thousand dollars each yeah so we borrowed a lot of money but what so we, we built this place and built three stories above we lived in one and had this beautiful terrace above our studio and we rented out two other floors and that alone is a whole nother story of who was out there and Crazy. The rentals, between the rentals and the hardware store, oh, I had lots of stories. But it was a beautiful place. And yeah. I had a studio in that. We, we designed a studio in that space for me. In your home, so you were able to stay close to your art. Right. So and before that, I had a studio on 11th Street and, and also 14th Street. So I was able to sort of bring them all together. Yeah. And right, so I had... One really beautiful studio, big glass windows overlooking over. So it was really, it was really wonderful. It was really great. Yeah. So, and then Ron had the whole downstairs of this commercial building. And we lived there till like 80s when we both loved windsurfing. Uh huh. We used to, because I had the hardware store, it was hard to take off lots of time. Sure. So like a long weekend was actually perfect. A long weekend in the Keys, you know, and you spend the time windsurfing out, and then you have some oysters, go to Papa Joe's, see the sunset, and it was just, I, and then you could go back in a couple of days, and you really felt like you were away. So we did that for years until we realized, you know, maybe we want to change up our lives some. So we found this property, and then um, it was scary. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it was really scary. It I was bet. a Red Cross house. Yeah. When we found the property, we also found this article about these really interesting architects who are design builders, and they come and live at your house, and they design and build. And they're wonderful craftsmen. They're incredibly smart and creative and fun and and so they lived here. They bring their trailers, their Airstream, and they live and work. And that was a couple of years worth. But they built us a house. So and the studio that we're sitting in. Wow. How many years ago did it finish and this became the place? Yeah, so it finished in 91, 90, maybe right before Stellar's were, maybe 92, something like that. Yeah. 90, 92, and then... Um, and then Stella was born, like, in uh, September of 92, right after I entered. So you have been here ever since. This has been home. Yeah, since 90, really, since we moved here. We were part of the construction. The architects love, you know, at one point I was going to, like, do this whole ceiling with um, little ceramic pieces. Sure, sure. And I made a bunch of them outside, you can see. And they uh -huh. actually hold up the rebar. Oh, wow. So that um, they were called stilts. Yeah. So I had a big plan to like cover the whole ceiling. Oh wow. Like that. Even just oh that small gosh. area we'll see it. With like several hundred tiles. And oh I my thought, gosh. I'm never gonna get to this whole ceiling. <laughs> I mean, what a great idea, but it's not gonna happen. It was really fun. But anyway, they got me involved in all kinds of 
ceramic things and building the house, which is a lot of fun. I can show you later. Absolutely. This is, and I can see some through the, the glass. Yeah. yeah so they're, all they're stunning. Yeah. yeah. They're stunning. Thanks. So now you we're, we're fast forward to 92. You're living and working down here. How did you transfer your ceramic life from New York to the Keys? So that was easy. That was easier than any other part of me. For me, living on the ocean was something I always wanted to do. And Ron and I were actually looking at properties in the Northeast, but couldn't afford anything sure. close to it. In fact, we were inspired by this trip we both took together to Greece and Turkey. And it must have been like in 74, 75. We got caught in the war between Greece and Turkey. And yeah. so we couldn't, we were on a Greek island, a hop, a stone's throw from Turkey and couldn't get there. And so we spent like, like two weeks there unintentionally and got to know the potter. And he would live in town, and every day he, worked, he walked from town to a studio, which was like these caves. But I'm sure his grandfather had a grandfather before that, like that. And he would make ceramics for the town and for the hotels and stuff. And every day he would walk to, to a studio, make some stuff, go to the Mediterranean, take a swim, walk back to home for lunch, come back after lunch, to the studio, make some more stuff, take another swim in the Mediterranean, walk home. I thought, I want that life. Who does want that life? So it was after that we were looking for oceanfront, and this was really the only place we could afford. So that and did you of, adopt so, that life? So yes. Yeah, so good question. So yes, I think living down here, you know, it's I'm in the colors and the light, and to me, like seeing leaves. Oh. That were the size of me, yeah. like took my breath away. Yeah. And I just thought, I want, you know, just, I want that in my clay. So I really started out making big banana leaves. <laughs> yeah. I had lots of molds that I draped big slabs of clay over. And, you know, just, I couldn't get enough of big leaves. Well, they're gorgeous. So it really kept me going. I don't really have that much around anymore uh, from You've that evolved. time. You've evolved. I have. I have. I, but. So people who are new to art and new to art in the Keys might want to know, how did you make this love and this passion become a way to support yourself? How did that happen? Well, I would say, number one, that I don't support myself on it. It would be a I'm not that kind of artist. Gotcha. So one could. Sure. But it's not how I think and it's not how I see myself. I understand. So I had to turn to other things. Okay. So I have, so I have like other things. So there's some right. real estate here and, but uh, for the longest time I was making money on my guanabana orchard. And I make also a home tandoor oven, which is a oh. clay oven. And, um, excuse me, that I sell on their website called Home Door. Okay. So I was trying, you know, I, I like being involved in all kinds of things. So That's I, awesome. And thinking about <coughs> practical ways to use the art is it's just a, a great blend of uh, your creative side and, and, and real yeah. life. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes. I mean, I do sell I sell things. Of course. And um, I give classes, and then I have a wonderful group who you met some of yes. them. Yes. Uh, Thursday afternoon, we've been doing this for years. I look to other business possibilities for the future, so I'm open to it. I totally am open to all kinds of things, but I am not a production partner and probably will never be. When um, people talk to me about my life in the Keys, they often ask, you know, how do you make it work? How how can you figure out a way to find your own niche in this unique and in some ways difficult place to live? Uh, what advice do you have for somebody asking you that and then – what advice would you have for an artist with that question? So either way or both ways. Yeah, so it's really a good question. The Keys has a rich history of attracting 
artists of all sorts, right? Yeah. So, um, and as it turns out, do you mind if I tell you a story? I'd love a story. Okay, good. Yes. So, That's why I'm here <laughs> in the hardware store, in my hardware store, where you know, so I grew up. Yes, my, my grandmother worked the register, oh, wow. like so, and it was right on Ninth Street, and the next street south was St. Mark's Place, which was sort of a hub of certainly um, art and music. Yeah. At that time, a very particular art and music, but it was really lots happening. My grandfather owned two buildings on St. Mark's Place, and one of them had this women's dress store. It was Christina's Dress Shop. So I knew Christina from the time I was a little kid. Christina would stop in the hardware store, we'd talk, and as when I was there more and more, I would see her more and more. And so she came in one time, and I'll never forget it, um, and she's like, Beth, have I got a good catch. <laughs> I just found someone, and he has a house in Florida, and he's got a house in New Hampshire, and he's a painter. And I was like, oh, God, that sounds great. I'm so happy for you, Christina. That's really wonderful. And she's like, um, and I said, so, and who is it? And she said, oh, God, his name is Jules Olitsky. And I had just graduated Bennington, and Jules was a big person in campus life there. And not that he was there then, but he's a, 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 a most wonderful painter. And I just, I am so close to his work. And I was just like, I can't believe you met Jules. I can't, you know, it's just my heart went out and I was so really deeply happy. Okay. So then that just, we just left that. I moved down here, building our house. Our neighbor, Carl, is like very friendly guy. He brings over Christina and Jules to the house to show them the house, not knowing that I knew her or You're him. You're a little girl. Right. Yeah. So he brings her over. She's walking. She's on my on the property. And Christina, she's like, Beth? I said, oh, my God. She said, I just lived down the road. And you been... Anyway, it was the funniest thing. So... We have this really wonderful so connection. So Jules is just one of my all-time favorite painters, and he had, and is there's another friend of his, Larry Poons, who um, they have had a very dynamic relationship. The two of them, but Larry had rented a trailer up on Winley Key for many many years. Him and his wife Paula, and he had this total outdoor. It was totally wonderful studio that. Paula would keep going, and he painted in the round. So my kids would, you know, would hang out there. We'd go yeah. look, and paint. so to me, like the artist's life here has been like just so much of who I am, how I see life here. So you're asking like for future generations or people who are listening who might be interested in in an artist's life in the Keys. I would say that there's, if you want something close to nature with all its terror and beauty, exceptional light, this would be a place to immerse yourself. How you make a go of it is always just, um, I don't think there's any one path. And I think that it's a road wide open. So I do think that there's room for all kinds of work. And I think it's a small enough community and an encouraging enough community and supportive community to make yourself comfortable. I wish you guys could see what I'm looking at. Beth has this amazing studio. She has everything. Well, okay, first of all, I'm not a ceramicist, so I don't know what a ceramicist need. But in my mind's eye, this is what a ceramicist needs. And yeah. it is everywhere. And it is one of the most creative settings I've ever been in. So I'm dying to know where in town, where anywhere can I go to see your work and to um, appreciate the beauty of what you do? <laughs> Thanks for asking, Nancy. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, well, a couple of things are coming up. Okay. Well, one could always call here. Okay. And I'm always open to having somebody here. But um, so two things. One is a very dear friend of mine. His name is Stephen Harvey, has a gallery in New York City. And I have a piece there from time to time. But he's got a booth at the Nada Fair, which is part of Art Basel. 
And so that's the beginning of December, and he's bringing my ceramics along with a wonderful painter, D Jordan Sally. And so it's just going to be the two of us at the Not Affair. How awesome. And that's in December. In I think Miami. beginning of December in okay. Miami. Yeah, it's the first, our Basel's the first week, right? First week, yes. yeah, first week. And then, so and that's Stephen Harvey Fine Art Projects. And he's got a wonderful gallery, by the way, in New York City, Forsyth Street, if anyone's interested. He's a most painting, yeah, a painting gallery. And a good website. I, I checked that out. Stephen Harvey Sarah. Yeah. yeah, he's got a great website. So, and also, I put a proposal together for an exhibition because the studios of Key West had a call for exhibitions, and I thought, oh, I could do that. You know, I could I could do that. I could put something together. So, and I was thinking all month, you know, so let's say I read it in um, June or July, whenever, sure. whatever month it was, and it was due at the end of that month. So I think it all month. Oh, and that's an idea. No, that won't work. But two days before it was due, uh -huh. a light went off. And so I thought, oh, God, I have these wonderful women artists, friends, who are painters and who have all visited in the Keys and also have a connection to Bennington College in some way or another. And so one is Lauren Olitsky, whose work is just totally magnificent. And she came down, we did some collaborative projects in clay together. I really love her. I love her work. I love working with her. Another woman is Paula Poons, well, Paula DeLuccia, and she's Larry Poons' wife. And so I got to know her when we were down here. I love her work, too. And she recently posted something on Instagram, which is the thing that inspired me to do this exhibition proposal was seeing that. Another friend is Leslie Park, whose brother used to live here. He had a house um, by the moorings. And she's a friend from Bennington. I love her paintings. We actually showed together in a gallery, Cross Mackenzie in Philly. I uh, know was in Philly, Washington, D.C., gotcha. Cross Mackenzie. We had a show, a two-person show together, her paintings, her photographs, actually, and my ceramics. That was really fun. And then a very dear friend of mine, Amanda Church, who's got two shows up right now in New York City, who is a painter, and we used to share a studio together on 11th Street <laughs> in New York City but, uh, after Bennington. So... We go way back, Amanda and I, and I feel like I've grown up with her in a lot of ways. So it's, uh, and then my ceramics. So, and I put it all together because there's some sort of wild connection between the college and the keys and some sort of vocabulary that we might share. Sure. Even though everybody's work is very different. Right. I think there are threads that one could draw. It was on those threads that I thought would make an interesting visual exhibition. I like got everybody, you know, would you be willing to do it? And everybody was excited about it. I was like so surprised by that. And then um, everyone sent photographs, and I was able to get it in two minutes before the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> and then they accepted it. Woohoo! So and then that's April, the April. beginning of April. Okay. It's like April 2nd to the 30th okay. at the studios in King West, which is really a wonderful yes. not-for-profit art place that everybody should know about and frequent and support and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, we definitely, two interesting things, definitely right? Definitely two amazing things. And, um, they can call if they want to take classes or, yeah, or get in. Okay. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. You'll relay that information. I, I will. I okay. will. Okay. One of the things that when I look at ceramics that I get so excited about is its connection to nature because you're dealing with earth. So it feels um, organic and um, of the earth to me. Uh, what are you thinking of when you create and what inspires you to create? So good question. <laughs> You know, so it, it it's something that changes sure. all the time. Yes. But recently, what inspires me, and I can't get these sort of shapes out of my mind, is the idea of just trying to stretch, like take up as much space and have it sort of suspended in any way, like, so this idea, this isn't really going to make any sense, but maybe, <laughs> maybe it wouldn't, but I, I like, I, so, okay, so I love making bowls and platters, and I could do them endlessly, and I sure. just love that idea of that big arch, yes. right, and looking into the world, 
in a bowl or a platter, like that kind of thing. So if you just sort of turn that over and have that shape hover, you have like this whole other kind of relationship to the ground. Yeah. Right? Yes. So, and if you take that hovering shape and you try and build up from that, you might actually see it in terms of, what do we say, like um, water spout kind of oh, thing. Okay. Like So something that is like gathers stuff on the ground and then, but it, it, I guess a water spout would be the yes. opposite thing. Yes. Something that starts on the top and, and gets really narrow and then spreads out at the bottom. Yes. I just, I mean, that idea. And it's not so easy in ceramics because they don't stand up on their own in the firing there's a point at which clay becomes what we call plastic, because I fire to cone 10, which is um, super high fire. It's like 2,300 degrees. And so at that point, clay has an element of plasticity. And so if something is slightly off-centered or slightly not built, it'll tilt. And you'll see that with all some of my failures. Okay. But I thought I really had a way to build this shape that I'm trying to describe. And I and I just you know the farther out I can get it and the narrower in the base is like the most exciting thing. So I'll tell you, I called up the salesman because I wanted to get these boards that I thought would be support. And actually, let's go back. I had so I had this idea of the shape, and I realized I have like lots of good friends who are like incredibly brilliant and creative architects, and I thought. I should have them come and work with me on a weekend and help me build these shapes. So, and give me some ideas for how to get this structure to work. And so I had two of them here and they were both like in, in crazy helpful. It was really wonderful. And so with one of them, we actually built these clay structural walls and I actually made one piece and it worked. Like, so those walls hold up that big disc. And so the narrow piece doesn't have to support anything. And it could just, so it, the whole support would come from these walls. And I thought, but if I could buy something that would stand up in the kiln, I could make this really, you know, taller, bigger thing than I'd been imagining. So I found these, and they were really expensive. Bought these boards that the salesman said would stand up in the kiln. And just through like my first try working at it, I couldn't get it to do what I wanted to do. And I had a friend, actually, a guy who's a really great handyman, come and help create this structure. Right. So we put it in the kiln, and it fell apart. It was mm. a major fiasco. But the thing is, uh, now I think I have this. Uh, now I think I could build it with with brick. Okay. So I'm going to build this wall out of brick that's going to hold this big disc, and it's going to work. What I find exciting, as as a, first of all, I wish you guys were sitting here next to me, watch watching how excited she is as she talks about this. But um, how you've been a ceramicist for how many years? Yeah, so I'm like it's almost fifty years. So after fifty years I of know. doing this, she's just as excited about this as if she were starting this yesterday. Well, Nancy, can you imagine? Okay, so you have this piece; it's being held up by these walls. And then, and you put it in the kiln, and it actually works. Yeah. And then you take the wall away, and it stands on its own. That's it's mind it's mind blowing. <laughs> I know, I know. It's mind blowing. It's like I feel like a little kid in a candy store. I keep thinking. Well, that's what's so okay. challenging about your medium because it yeah. has these definite limits. And it you, totally does. And you have to manipulate those limits. It totally does. And um, I was just recently talking to my teacher. We were your you know, ninety four year old right, teacher. Yeah. Stephen and I were. Stephen and I were. Trying Dropping off some of the his pieces at Stephen Hannah's gallery, and we were dropping them off, and so we had dinner. It was, I told him of my catastrophe and what was happening. He said, "Well, Beth, you know, you've always sort of been on the edge." <laughs> 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 Isn't, that's what I have to say about it. Well, you know, um, oh, there it is. If, if you're doing art on the edge, why not there do it, it on the edge of the continent <laughs> down here, you know, in the Keys? You know, it. it's the perfect place to do it. That's it. I can't thank you enough for this time. It's been an exciting um, experience for me because I'm a newbie to your medium and I, I love it. I love that you're, you know, exploring it. And I love this idea of your podcast. So I wish you lots of luck on that. Thank Nancy, you. Really. Thank you. It's nothing. 
great a, idea. It's been a labor of love for me. I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. That's great. Good. Good luck. Thank you. 